how people buy into it. And again, this, this isn't just the left. Take an economic fallacy on the right. The biggest economic fallacy on the right right now is that trade deficits matter. But they don't. No serious economist thinks that trade deficits matter. If Trump's problem with China was intellectual property, we can get to that in a minute. But let's let, put aside intellectual property. Let's say Trump's problem with China is human rights. What they're doing in Hong Kong. Then okay, I can understand taking an economic hit in order to fight for something you believe in. All right. If it was intellectual property, I mean... Um, one of my favorite economists, John Cochran, has this uh, thing on intellectual property. So imagine, imagine that, you know, it's uh, what China's, what's happening with China is that they are, in a sense, expropriating half a trillion dollars, let's say $500 billion of intellectual property. That sounds like a, a too large of a number given the trade. Let's say it's, let's say it's, uh, let's say it's, um, $200 billion a year, they're expropriating in intellectual property. Let's say that what we cut a deal with them is that they give us, they hand us cash of $200 billion a year, in a sense royalties, on the intellectual property that they are being taking. Right? We're selling them in the intellectual property for $200 billion a year. So let's say we got $200 billion a year from them. How would they get the $200 billion to give to us? Right? It's an extra $200 billion in dollars that they don't have. They, they don't get to print dollars. They actually have to get dollars. How would they get that? Well, they would get it by investing in more factories, produce more stuff to export to us so that they could get the dollars, so that they could give us the dollars back in the form of royalty payments. In other words, the only way for them to pay us the royalties is is by increasing the trade deficit. Or let's do it another way. Let's say instead of them giving us a royalty on all the IP that they have stolen, let's say they don't steal it. And let's say the consequence of that is American companies in China now have $200 billion more of profits because their intellectual property wasn't stolen from them, right? What are they going to do with that $200 billion? They're going to invest it maybe in Chinese factories to buy more American, to, to sell America more stuff and increase the trade deficit. Or they're going to send the money home. Let's say the money, let's say the $200 billion actually is in the United States. It's not even in China. It's in the U.S. already, right? The companies just get to keep $200 billion more in the United States. What are we going to do with that $200 billion? Primarily. Well, ultimately, we're going to use it to buy more Chinese stuff. I mean, what's the point of having money if you don't go out and buy stuff? And who makes the cheapest and best stuff? China, Korea, Japan, Germany. Some stuff in America, but only some. The bigger our economy gets, the richer we become, the more stuff we're going to buy. There's no, there's no issue of a trade deficit. Trade deficits matter zero, nada, not. Not with China, not with anybody. So the idea that trade deficits matter is an anti-economic concept. And I'm not even talking about the moral aspect. I've talked about the fact that as an individualist, it's just none of the government's business who I buy my stuff from. None of their business. If I want to buy Chinese stuff, why is it the government's business? Why is the government deciding how much Chinese versus German versus Mexican versus American stuff I buy as an individual? Isn't it just my business? But from a purely economic perspective, it's just the whole thing doesn't make any sense. As I've often described, I have a huge trade deficit with a grocery store. 
I go to grocery store, I buy stuff, I leave my dollars there. They never hire me to give talks at the grocery store. They never hire me. I mean, I feel horrible. So trade deficits don't matter. They just don't. And there's no, so there's no benefit to using tariffs on China. And I don't know if you saw the deal, the deal over the weekend, the deal that Trump cut, uh, phase one of the deal. Phase one of the deal is instead of Washington subsidizing farmers, we're going to get the Ch American farmers. We're going to get the Chinese to subsidize American farmers. They have supposedly committed to, although they have denied it now, they're supposedly committed to buying, I don't know, $50 billion more of, of agricultural goods for the United States. Now, why is that good? Why is that good? I mean, one, is the best use of American capital now to invest in more machinery, buy more land, cultivate more land to produce food for the Chinese when they could just as well buy that food from Brazil or from Argentina or from somewhere else if Argentina ever opened up their economy enough? Why is it, why does it make sense for America to invest in farmland because of some artificial demand coming from China because Trump twisted their arm to do it? What benefit does it give America? Yeah, I mean, some farmers are going to get rich. But from an economic perspective, it's completely wasteful. It makes no sense. The only thing that makes sense is for the Chinese to buy what they want to buy, however much they want to buy it. Ideally, they lower tariffs to zero, but that's not the issue. Trump didn't get a concession where they lower tariffs. He just got a concession where they committed to buying X amount of stuff for American farmers. But that's just another distortion to the American economy. It's another external distortion that's going to create... Uh, you know, massive investment into farming. And it's not clear that that investment, well, it's, it's clear that that investment is completely unjustified given, you know, food production in the world and demand for food in the world. This is completely artificial. But that's the kind of complete economic nonsense. Complete doesn't make any sense. That you're not going to hear it anywhere. Nobody says it. Nobody goes on television talking about this. The pundits don't talk about it. Certainly the politicians don't talk about it. No, neither the left nor the right, because none of them believe in actual economics. None of them know actual economics. And none of them believe in actual economics. They just do what they think you want to hear, which is, look, I just created lots of farm jobs. I just created gazillions of profits for our farmers, our farmers. I don't have farmers. Do you have farmers? Anybody have farmers? American farmers. Who cares? Who cares what happens to American farmers versus Brazilian farmers? What difference does it make? It doesn't make any difference to my life. As long as there's food in the grocery store, I don't care where it comes from. If farming becomes less profitable, then that capital will be deployed elsewhere, and that labor will be deployed elsewhere, and people will produce something else and build something else, and make something else, and create something else. So, they lie about this stuff all the time. And the challenge with that is, it's very hard to tell when they're doing it. Because they do it with confidence. And they do it with graphs. Let me get rid of the graph, we don't really need the graph on the screen. They do it with statistics. They do it with people who look like they're experts and who come on television and have PhDs. And yet, they're either liars or idiots, or in most cases, both. And we believe politicians. Why do we believe politicians? Why do we believe politicians? Yeah, Louis says, where are they going to get the $50 billion to buy, to buy our, you know, farm stuff? Well, by selling us more stuff. 
So the trade deficit's not going to shrink. And the trade deficit hasn't shrunk. With all the tariffs and everything, the trade deficit hasn't shrunk. And I've explained the mechanism why it doesn't shrink, because the value of the dollar goes up, because the Chinese still want dollars in order to either to buy the $50 billion or primarily to invest, you know, in the United States. They need dollars. So they buy them in the market, driving the value, the value of the dollar up. So one way or another, which makes it cheaper for us to buy Chinese goods, And therefore, we buy more. And the deficit doesn't change. The dollar amount of the deficit just seems unbelievably stable. Because it's not, and tariffs don't matter that much to those kind of things. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, Many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourownbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...